In this video, I will go through two very basic clustering examples. By the end, hopefully you'll be more comfortable building a cluster to fit your modeling project. First some basics, like what is clustering? Clustering algorithms organize data into groups, or clusters. Ultimately, these clusters will be used to achieve some sort of purpose, so the idea is to organize data into meaningful groups. Clustering algorithms are unsupervised. This means that there is no external factor or target used to judge the performance. Really, we're letting the data speak for itself. The cluster's success will be determined by how useful or helpful it is in achieving the ultimate goal. Why do we cluster data? Well, clustering is rarely the end goal in a project, but it is a very common intermediate step in many larger modeling projects. As an example, I've used clusters to extrapolate data. For instance, if you find an attribute is very consistent within a cluster, you could assign that attribute to members in the cluster where that data is missing. This is especially useful when trying to estimate the outcomes for something brand new. Clustering can also help with dimension reduction. Let's say you have a lot of demographic data, for instance, that when segmented is giving you very low predictor importance and is increasing runtime. Instead of using that raw data, demographic clusters might turn out to be a very powerful predictor and reduce runtime. A couple notes on data prep specific to clustering. Remember that we want to create meaningful groups. In order to do that, it's on you to choose your inputs wisely. An example of this may be including gender or race in a demographic cluster. People automatically sort others by gender, so it seems natural to include that. It may be the case, however, that there's no significant difference between behavior of males and females. So by including that field, you've actually made your groupings less meaningful. Another thing you should consider is scaling your data. For example, if you're trying to group people by height and weight, and height is measured in feet and weight is in pounds, is a one pound difference as significant as a one foot difference? Probably not. In that case, you may consider either changing the units or even normalizing your data so that they are of similar scale. Now that we've covered the basics, let's go to an example. First, let's look at some test scores. Most of the time, teachers will base their grades off of some thresholds at like 90%, 80%, 70%. Well, I had some professors in college that prided themselves on making very difficult tests, and it was rare to get above a 75. In that case, they actually looked at natural clustering in the data to assign grades. So I actually just pulled this text file somewhere off the internet. I'm going to run a histogram plot. Here we see we have scores ranging from maybe 30-ish to almost 100%. There's a big group here, and it might be difficult um, for someone to assign, you know, what's A, what's B. Um, let's see what the data says. I'm going to throw in a type node, because if I don't, uh, the modeling node's going to yell at me. When in doubt, if you're having problems, go ahead and try to throw in a type node and see if that fixes it. I'm going to go to modeling segmentation, which holds our clustering algorithms. First, I'm going to test a two-step. So in our type node, um, the role is already set to input for the exam scores. These clustering algorithms will only look at role set to input. If you have something set to target or both, they're going to ignore it. So set it to input. I'm just going to use our predefined roles and um, the defaults first, and I'm going to run. Now, if I go back to the two-step options, I have it automatically calculating uh, the number of clusters between these two counts. What typically will happen is it'll either go to the maximum or the minimum. And what we see here is that is exactly what it did. So we have two clusters, which was the minimum. So I'm going to go ahead and define exactly what I want. I'll say five. So I get the A, B, C, D, F cut. I'm going to run this again and we have our five different clusters. I'm going to go ahead now and graph that and see what it looks like. Exam score, I'm going to color it by the two-step, and I'm actually going to change the bid width, bin width so it's easier to see. So here we see our, our different grades, right? So we have this first cluster, which may be our A grades. Um, second cluster, B, C, maybe these are all Ds. Um, anything below is an F. So this is where the data naturally 
These are the natural clusterings based off the data. I'll go ahead and move these down. And I'm going to look at a different model. So let's look at k-means. So for k-means, you have to define the number of clusters. It's already set to 5, so I'll keep that. I'm going to use the predefined roles, and let's run it. I want to, I'm going to go ahead and look at it the same way. So attach it here. I'm going to color it by the k-means clusters. Run. Now it's similar, but there are some differences. So I'll actually get the other one out. We can look at them side by, by side. So here we see um, the k-means clusters actually put some of these middle groups into the Bs, um, took them out of the As, but um, it pushed this guy into a C versus a D. So we do see differences even in a, um, in a da data set this simple. So when you're going through and clustering your data, you're probably going to want to try a few different types of algorithms and just see how they work out. In the second example, we're going to look at something a little bit more interesting. Now we're going to look at clustering stores based off their climate. So in this data set, I have um, days with high temperature, low temperature, precipitation, and snow. Now for this specific application, which was um, replacement car part assortment planning, these climate attributes turned out to be important. If I were in a different industry, I might want to look at a different input, and that's about you know, that goes back to choosing your inputs wisely. If I were studying joint pain or headaches, I might be more interested in pressure changes. So I'm going to, again, throw on a type node. And I do not want to use latitude and longitude. I only want to look at climate. So I'm setting these to input, these to none. I'm going to look at the two-step. Again, you might want to try a, a couple different algorithms. Using the default settings gave us three clusters. We're going to test a few different number of clusters. In determining what the final number of clusters should be or that you want, you have to balance a few things. One, you want to split the data into enough groups that'll be useful. So maybe three groups is enough. Maybe you want more groups. As you increase the number of clusters, you're going to be reducing the sample size within your cluster. So you need to watch your smallest cluster size. You want to make sure that that smallest cluster is still large enough to be meaningful and reliable. Now, with a big data set, you might set that threshold pretty high. Maybe, you know, here we have 235. Maybe that's the smallest you want to get. With smaller data sets, you might find yourself accepting a, a cluster size of six. Um, Typically, I try to go for 20 or higher, but again, it's, it depends on, on the data that you get. You also want to look at your cluster quality defined by the silhouette. Now, the silhouette basically says how distinct these groups are, how tight around the center, and how far apart they are from other groups, the cohesion and the separation. As an example, we'll go ahead and look at some, well, not a silhouette, but a shadow. But let's say that the data here is represented by the shadow of these two bottle caps. So here in this data set, we have two very distinct clusters, right? They're very tight, they're dense, and there's a very clear separation between the two groups. So as I pull this up towards the sky, the edges start to blur, the light refracts, they start to blend together. So if I look at this data set now, we no longer have the clear edge. The data has now spread out. It's not as cohesive or tight as it once was. And the two clusters are starting to blend into each other. So they're not as separate as they once were. So ultimately, you're hoping to keep your cluster quality in this good range. I'm also going to graph this um, just so we can see it. Look at a plot here. Look at longitude versus latitude. I'm going to color it by. So here we actually have a map of the US. I want to see more groups because I know there's big differences even within these groups. Um, you know, within California alone, Northern and Southern California aren't similar. 
So I'm going to go ahead and increase the sample size or the number of clusters. Let's pump it up to something big. I'm going to say, you know what, let's go with 30. All right. So again, I want to look at my minimum sample size or our smallest cluster and our quality. So the quality is still good, but if I look at the smallest clusters now, it's seven. That's I have enough data. I don't need any. I, I don't need seven. I want to see something much higher than that. So I'm not even going to look at these. Let's look at. I'm going to go down again, way back down. So let's look at seven. If I look at here, now we have um, the smallest cluster at 38. That's pretty good, and our cluster quality is still good. So I'm liking this. And here we can see the distribution of those seven clusters, which is sort of interesting. On this, on this first pass, I like these seven clusters, right? There's no real right or wrong answer. I'm going to apply them to some process that we have downstream, like maybe a classification model. But I will come back and test a few different cluster sizes uh, to see how it affects that downstream model. And with that iterative process, that's how we'll determine exactly how many clusters I want. Well, thanks for sticking with me. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you're a little bit more familiar with clustering. But remember, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask Qubit.